It's taking me back to the moment that Antoinette and her sisters were here playing as kids, not realizing how drastically their life was about to change. Right. I can't imagine. Ugh. I can't imagine what kind of life she's lived. There was no trace of her. There wasn't anything that showed maybe a forced abduction. There weren't a lot of her belongings that were missing. It's just so bizarre that at the age of nine, she could just completely just vanish. This is the home where Anthony Gaidito was last seen. Remember that night that uh, there were several knocks? I don't recall a second you knock. You don't recall a second knock? I don't recall a second knock. We also read in the report that your mom said there was a second knock information I was gathering that this person took flowers to Antoinette. That was a big red flag. Do you think Antoinette's alive? I'm Antoinette Garibito. There is a slight bit of hope on this case. Antoinette could be alive. I would hope so. Nobody has ever reported on that on that golden ticket in this police report. I see it as a confession. I see it as a confession. Hey everyone, I'm Crystal. I was a TV news reporter and anchor for more than 15 years, covering stories of remarkable people, tragedies that turned into heartbreak, and stories that are now part of history. But there are some stories that just stick with you. Wait, how many missing persons cases do you believe you have? Wish I never Every year, tens of thousands of people are listed as missing. Can you see how we've come so far? So I called in the expertise of my longtime friend, retired detective, now private investigator, Lewis. No, I don't believe that. I really don't believe that. It... There's no evidence behind it. You know. Together, we're diving into cases that sit untouched for years. Like maybe they missed something. I feel they focused too much on him. You think so? And it may not have been him the whole time. And hitting the road. All right, you ready? Farmington, here we come. Along the way, we'll talk to those left behind. She was wonderful. She was my older sister. Something feels missing. Just one Something's not right. And to those who were part of the investigation. I mean, the same dog found uh, burnt remains. All in hopes of uncovering new details. He has never been interviewed by police. That's the person that I think did it to give families some closure as we go beyond the case. Again, again, again. Okay, and I go all the Three, way two. Welcome back to Beyond the Case. We're working on another really sad case, another missing child. This time though, we're going to Gallup, New Mexico, trying to find Antoinette Calladito. Here's her missing persons flyer that's been out since 1986. That was the last time anyone in her family says they saw her. Um, her disappearance is really kind of strange because she went to sleep, according to her mom, with her two sisters. And around three o'clock in the morning, her mom says that was the last time she saw her and that she was asleep inside the home. By seven o'clock the next morning, nobody could find her. They did a search of the home. Um, the surrounding neighborhood, the area where uh, her home was. And uh, her sisters have not been able to uh, really place what happened to her. There is something, though, bizarre about this case because one of the sisters actually said that she remembers somebody coming to their home that night and uh, said that he was Uncle Joe and asked for Antoinette to come out with him. Um, Nobody knows who it was, according to the family, because she does have an Uncle Joe, but the man that came to the home was not Uncle Joe. For some reason, between the hours of three and seven, that's when her mom says she disappeared, 
and she has not been seen since. Now we, I actually went and picked up this case from Gallup, New Mexico. Uh, we, when I picked it up, I handed it over to Lewis. Uh, Lewis, what did you find? Because this was a mess. Yes, it is. It's still a mess. Um, the entire case was not in chronological order. Mm -hmm. I spent two days breaking it down. I separated all of the tips that came in nationwide. This case was broadcasted a national uh, TV show, uh, Unsolved Mysteries. But you did find some interesting things about this case before we leave, right? Yes, a lot of interesting things. There was a, a guy mm -hmm. that would bring Antoinette flowers and roses. Yeah, because he was totally enamored with her. And during the investigation and the interviews, Penny, the mother, also perked my ears. She's the last one to have claimed to have seen her. We don't know. That's what we gotta figure out. Huh, okay. So we're heading to Gallup, guys. Let's load up because we have a long way to drive. We do. And we have a lot to talk about on the yes, way. We do. So we can really unravel this case a lot further during this uh, two plus hour drive. Yes. So let's go. You ready? Oh, let's go. Something's not right. I had it all written, but the ink never dried. Throw out the page. What do I say if all I thought I wanted went running away? One deep breath out, one deep breath in, again, again, again. I don't wanna give up. We are heading to Gallup to go talk to the sister yes. of Anthony Caidito. The girl who disappeared, went missing when she was only nine years old from Gallup, New Mexico. That's right, Sadie is the sister. Mm -hmm. Antoinette went missing when she was nine years old, completely without a trace. No one has heard from her, seen from her. However, there was a call about a year after her disappearance from a young girl who claimed to be Antoinette. They weren't able to trace it. Uh, they do believe the phone call came from Gallup, even though she'd said she was in Albuquerque. Right. When they interviewed Sadie, it was an extensive interview, twice, of a seven-year-old. They didn't interview mom, at least not on record, until five days later. And I really want to find out what her memory remembers from those interviews right. to what now a grown-up Sadie recalls as possible memory and possible dream or somebody was trying to tell her what to say there has been many many stories on this there's been many theories on on uh Anthonette's disappearance uh one of the theories was that her mom was involved that she had some sort of involvement remember <clears throat> Anthonette left the home or disappeared from the home right wearing a pair of pajamas. Second theory is she just ran away. Mm -hmm. Last theory. That somebody abducted her. That's right. I think the craziest part of this entire case is that nobody has ever really been named a person of interest. Right. Here we are, welcome to Gala. I've been trying to look for all of these things to hold on to, but oh, I'm finding better right. days thanks so much for talking to us i know this is hard to see yeah it's yeah. it's she was wonderful she was my older sister I'm Sadie Acevedo. I'm Anthony's sister. I know you were only seven back then. I want to take you back to that night. The night, the last night that you saw Anthony. Tell me, what were you doing? What, what did she do? What was it like at the home? Um, my mom was getting ready to go out. Um, and it's, it's a memory for, for me, and it's always been the same memory because it was, it, so as my mom was getting ready 
um, this man showed up. His name was Emilio. Well, they called him Emo then. That's what we knew him by, was Emo. He showed up to the house. And um, he brought Antoinette flowers and a gift. And as my mom was in the back, he was still in the front with us. We had a four bedroom, two bathroom house. We had a pretty good sized front room. Um, and my mom's room was way in the back. So he was in there and I, I don't remember what he was talking to Antoinette about. I don't remember, but I just remember he had Antoinette sit on his lap. I remember Antoinette being scared. Antoinette was our mother hen. She kept us with her all the time. Um, my mom had frequent parties at the house. Um, so when people would come around, it was always Antoinette taking us to her room or just keeping us out of that environment. Um, Protecting you guys. Yeah, definitely, definitely. She, that, that's who she was. Um, so we grabbed her, I grabbed her, and got her off his lap and we went to her room. We had a four bedroom, two bathroom house. We all had our own room, but we always wanted to sleep with my mom. And so we made a bed. My mom had her bed where her and Anthony slept and then me and Wendy made a bed on the side of hers and that's where me and Wendy slept. And of course we were mad because Anthony got to stay up and we had to go to sleep. <laughs> but yeah. So you guys went to bed before she did? Mm -hmm. Yeah, my mom and her stayed up. They stayed up playing cards. Was that a normal? Thing for them to do, play cards in the middle of the night? Um, I will say no. Do you remember that night that uh, there were several knocks on the yeah. door? Do you remember that? Yeah. Tell me about um, it. It was, I, I don't know if we were woken up out of our sleep that night or if it had happened just before we fell asleep, but my mom told us to ignore it because it was just, uh, oh man, I always remember his name. She says a name and she says it's just him. And you can hear him saying, come on, Penny, just let me in. Just let me in, come on, Penny. And she just tells us like, be quiet. Just be quiet. Did Antoinette, was she in the room with you guys at that yeah. time? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's why I think it was It was more before we fell asleep because her and my mom were still up. And my mom was just like, just leave it. He'll go away. Okay. That was the first knock. Mm -hmm. Remember at all the second knock? No. no. Okay. How did you recall the second knock? Was it just because your mom said it happened? I don't recall a second you knock. You don't recall a second knock? I don't at all. recall a second okay. knock. I know Wendy's the one that said there was a second knock. That there was a second knock and on that the door. Could be the... And that's where they say it's your Uncle Joe opened okay. the door. And because we also read in the report that your mom said there was a second knock. Yeah, and that's, and that's the story that, that they had went with. And then even if somebody was knocking in the middle of the night, we knew better not to open the door. You do not open that door to anybody. You ask who it is, or if I'm not here, you ask who it is. You know, you, and, but we were not allowed to open the door to anybody. And that, that was like golden rule.
she woke us up, it was time for church, and she said, come on, you girls, she says, I can't find Anthony. And that's where the search started. We started looking under the beds and the closets. Um, it just like, where is she? Looking behind shower curtains, and then we went knocking door to door. By then, um, my mom claimed that the door was left open ajar. Um, but when they had come to test, there was no sign of forced entry. And that's kind of bizarre. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah, definitely. Did, did, did your mom ever leave the door open? No. So when we were kids, it was always, um, and I remember that from when she got home that night, it's lockdown. That's what she called it, lockdown. So we'd go around the house and behind each other and lock the windows, make sure the door was locked, and then my mom was the final check. What was it like in the home that Sunday morning? What was it like? It was strange. It was, it was really strange. Um, we didn't know what was going on. We went knocking door to door, um, asking, you know, have you seen my sister? First, of course, across the street, because that was Antoinette's best friend. Um, and then my mom had some friends right around the corner. And, you know, just, just trying to find if anybody had seen her or, I mean, we're seven and five years old. The, the emotions, the, it's just like more confusion I guess, than, than fear of what could have happened or happened with her. We're just kind of like watching my mom's emotions. Did you think she's gonna come back home? Yeah, yeah. Definitely, um, they're gonna find her somewhere. You know, they're, they're gonna find her and days went by. You spoke of this gift and that was a necklace mm -hmm. that he brought, you had brought some flowers, mm -hmm. right? And a gift and you saw your sister sitting on his lap, yeah. right? And you pulled her off. Yeah, Did, yeah. We describe had... the necklace, do you remember it? Small silver with the turquoise on the inside, like the belly of the bear. It was a bear. And your mom wore that? Uh, she kept it. So my mom, oddly, had a shrine for my sister. Mm -hmm. And on it, she had an open Bible. Um, she had that necklace there. She had um, just various things. I. I, it's strange the way she would do it, but she would have people like, if you want to leave something for Anthony, you just say a prayer and you leave it there. So our whole lives, we had this thing and it just had all kinds of different trinkets, like little rocks. Some people would leave rings, they would leave earrings, they would say a prayer and they would put it on there. It was, it was really strange. It was a strange little shrine. that was given to Antoinette from Emo. Did you ever see him come by the house before then? He always came with a man, another man. Um, and I would say like maybe, I, I, I don't know how much time prior that they used to come. He never came to the house by himself. He was always with this other man. And that other man was my mom's best friend. Ronald's the one who introduced this man to my mom. Ronald Perry and my mom were best friends, always. Um, when my mom partied, he was always one of the ones that was there. Um, and the night of Antoinette's disappearance, Emo had showed up by himself. So let's talk about after Antoinette's disappearance. Did you see him anymore? No, no. You never seen him and you never seen Ro uh, Ronald ever talk to my mom. Ronald and my mom, I, I can't stress that enough, they were best friends. And so he never came around the house, he never talked to my mom again. Does that strike you as odd? Oh yeah, yeah, because I remember going to their house, I remember playing with their kids, and it didn't happen again after Anthony was gone. and it's watching this, what would you tell her? Uh, she said, we haven't given up. We haven't given up. We love you. You have, you have family that loves you and that's here for you. 
Just come home. Come home. You're safe. Something feels missing. Something's not right. I had it all written, but the ink never dried. Throw out the page. What do I say if all I thought I wanted went running away? One deep breath out, one deep breath in, again, again, again. She's been carrying this for so long. Right. And her sister-in-law was there in the house, right. right? She mentioned that she asked her one specific question. Do you really want to know? Right. And I think that's, it's such a hard question to answer because in one hand you do, but then on the other hand, can you handle it? Can she handle knowing the truth? What I saw, her body language, her demeanor was, she has hopes that Anthony is still alive. Hello. Have you heard the call? Yeah. You've heard it? Yeah. And do you feel that it sounded like Anthonette? I could say yes. I could say yes. But it was a lot. It was a lot. Uh, okay, so we need to go to... We need to go to Anthony's home. Yeah. Go to. Two, one, two, three. Two, two, four, two, 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 four. Two, four. Two, four. Where are we going? This is, this is where the live. home where Anthony Caidito was last seen. Imagine this moment about a million times. And I know it's been said. So it's four bedrooms in there. Yes. And Sadie mentioned how it was a big living area, yes. but that they all slept in one bedroom. Yes. So they definitely would have all heard the same thing. We do know Roger Plummer came here. Yes, he said he did. He said he came at 3 30, 2 3 30 yes. and 4. Yes. In the morning, somebody just dropped him off. Right. So he would have saw something suspicious yes because then he walked to the woman's home who was babysitting right so it wasn't as if he pulled up in a vehicle and he stayed here all night no. um he would have saw something so that that narrows the gap right. the timeline right. of when this could possibly have happened and also remember crystal that that morning on the 22nd mm -hmm. at 6 30 in the morning is where, uh, I should say, is when they said that they went to the hills back here to look for that lost dog. Here we are with one of the theories as to what may have happened to Anthony in the early morning hours of the day that she was last seen, was there was a search party that was out here not looking for her. No. They were looking for a lost dog. That's right, Anthony's house is just a block away from here, right? This is where they allegedly got a search party together to look for that lost dog, and she was supposed to have been a party of it. Right. A child said that she was with this party looking for this dog. Uh, again, she's just about a block away. We spoke about the possibility of her being in that party, but everybody returned. Right. And she didn't. And what's interesting is that it's all secondhand information. That's right. So this information came from Penny, uh, her boy, her living boyfriend at the right. time. He mentioned that it was the search party group that told him. That's right. So this is now third, fourth hand information. That's right. You know, I'm, I'm willing to, you know, to wage that the party happened, but not that Anthony was part of it. Talk about the theory that she ran away. Okay. 
I don't see it happening. Okay. And I know, I get it, that she was in a very, um, which she had mentioned and so did Sadie, that it was very abusive yes. inside that home. Right. So I could see why a child in that situation may want to leave. Right. Um, I can't see her leaving her sisters though. No, no. We spoke a lot and in depth about children that run away from home. Especially in Antoinette's case, she was the older sibling. She was taking care of her little ones. Mm -hmm. She was the mother figure, right? We spoke right. about how she dressed them, she fed them, she clothed them. And for her to just say, I'm done, I don't see it. And after all these years, after all these years, there was no contact. If she did run away with her younger siblings, whom she acted as a little mother hen to, there was no contact. Right. There was cut off. And she would have taken some belongings. I know she was only nine, right. but you would have thought ahead of, right. I need clothing, right. I need some food, right. I need something right. to help me get through the next few days before I figure out what yeah. I'm doing next. No. There was nothing missing from the home. Right. Something that we keep finding in this case is that Anthony may have been sold. Right. So if that were the case, she could be alive. That's right. said it before, we need to find the person who took her right. to find Anthonette. Let me ask you this. So I know we keep going back to emo. It's I feel okay. like that name keeps coming yeah. up over and over, no, right? It's okay. Um, it, it is. It's, he's, he's a huge part of the story. Human trafficking, possibility. Drug trafficking, we know in the reports that the, you know, in, in the, I should say in the interviews, that there was some uh, raids by police before the missing, uh, the child went missing. This guy that's alive, he should have been picked up. Like right away, as soon as she made that statement, somebody should have been dropping the dime to Gallup and say, pick that dude up. And one of the persons that I'm interested in is in Ron Perry as well. You were interviewed by police and FBI would really want to get some more information from you. And it would be interesting to hear their side of the story. It would be interesting to hear what they have to say to clear their, let's clear the air and give us more details. So that way, you know what, if, if you have nothing to do with this and you have no involvement, help us find the direction to go. Right. And the question was, do you know where Antoinette Calladito is? And he said no. And the next question is, do you know who took Anthony Calladito? And this is what he said. He says, no, I didn't take her. Five is that someone inside that house knew someone is coming to pick her up. Yeah, yeah. What do you think your mom's involvement is? You're the one who just said it. I know my mom confessed. Did you ever read her confession? I never have. So we do have a copy of her confession. 